Howdy, howdy, folks. Back again, working on a Elite Impulse 34. We're going to change out the strings. We are going to get a new loop in it, get the feet back on it, tune it up a little bit, shoot it through the paper, get this bad boy looking good. Hope y'all are doing okay. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. We would greatly appreciate it. We have got a cool string to put on this thing. It's a one we made. It's a, like a sand uh, speckled color. I'll try to do a close-up for y'all. But uh, these strings have definitely seen their better day. Looks like the original strings that came on the bow. So it was a good time for him to swap them out. We'll check the speed. We'll do all the normal stuff. Y'all just stay tuned. And we'll see what we run into. Usually, these Elite Bows tune up real well. So I don't expect any craziness. So we shall see. Here we go. So, something a little different you will see this time around. <clears throat> I usually, as y'all know if you've watched me before, tie my little inner knocking points on my loop. But he has requested the smallest possible loop I can put on here. So, I'm not going to put those inner knocking points so that I can give him a tiny little loop um, so here's my thoughts on the tiny loop <clears throat> I used to love them and I used to I used to uh, do a lot of them before I started tying these little inner knocking points if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at most of my other videos if, and fast forward to this point and you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, it looks good and it's neat, looks neat, whatever. But the more I have thought about it and tinkered, the smaller the loop, the more torque is going to transfer to your bowstring if you don't have your release head perfectly square. So even if, let's say you're shooting a handheld, you pull it back like this and put a little twist in it and it's actually going between that those two knots in that loop it's going to try to torque it a little bit even with a caliper style release if you don't pull it back and have it perfectly square you might get into trouble he's shooting a, he's shooting a mongoose i don't think he'll have too much trouble but just throwing it out there we'll get his bowstring level let me make sure y'all can see what i'm doing here Bring in just a little bit. I'm gonna get his bowstring level. Then I'm gonna get his arrow level. He is shooting a 70 pound bow and this is a Beeman ICS 300. So that will probably match up pretty well. He could probably get away with a 340, but it's always better to be a little stiff than a little weak, so it should work out just fine. Let that cool off. bottom part tied make sure we're still level on the bow flip over to the arrow get it level I 
I've seen other people, I need to pay more attention maybe, but they set their bows up with it hanging with the bow like horizontal. I have never tried that, but I'd be curious to see how that works. I guess you could level the string and hang the arrow or something, but I'd just be worried that, that maybe the knot wouldn't be hanging perfectly level because of whatever. So, but I will play around with that idea. I've seen somebody doing that and I thought, hmm, that's different. I've always been a get the string level, get the air level. That tells you you're perfectly square, and then go from there. I'm just going to eyeball his center shot. A lot of times I forget to tell you I'm doing this, but if a bow already comes in and it's previously been tuned and all that, usually center shot something I don't have to mess with, at least to start with. Um, I'm just more or less worried about the getting the the loop level so I'm gonna take his arrow out <clears throat> I'm gonna take my fancy little tiny craftsman needle nose and give it an initial stretch and then I'm gonna use these I've talked about these before I'm definitely not gonna just hammer down if you do that it will dig into the serving I don't care what serving you use. This in particular is a 21,000th Angel Majesty. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to put this in here and get it snugged up. But definitely I'm not, I'm not just hammering down on it. So now I'm going to get his old string, line up his loops, get his peat pot set, tie it in. Then we'll put the draw stops back on. And then we'll check the timing. And then we'll paper tune it. We'll be ready for him to come tinker. Man, I might have hit the, looks like it's lined up perfect right where it sits. We'll go ahead and tie around the peak. So this bow <clears throat> is from a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Gene. And I have known Gene since my days. Y'all have heard us talk about bucks and bass. But I've known Gene since the early 2000s. When he would come in bucks and bass. I'm going to back up so y'all can see the peep. Excuse the mess, as always. I know it's a mess. But, uh, anyway, it's currently when I'm doing this. I don't know when you may be watching it, but we're in the first part of May. So it's a good time to have a bow worked on. Not right before hunting season. And this year, we've had all this corona virus mess so we've actually had a whole lot of bows dropped off here lately which is great we're hoping that a lot of those folks would have been the folks that would have waited until two weeks before the season but they're sitting at home bored and decided to go ahead and do it so Hopefully that's the case. We expect that rush the last month or so before hunting season, but it's always, you feel bad because people come in literally a day or two before hunting season. And we do anything we can to get everybody happy, but 
I mean, they'll need, they'll have like a 15 year old string and want their bow restrung and tuned 48 hours before hunting season starts. And we'll be like, listen, it ain't gonna happen. So, get this snug. Usually, people don't get mad. We've had a few. I don't think people understand sometimes how all this works. You know, first of all, we really don't just have strings hanging on the wall waiting to be put on. We custom make them. We keep, I mean, I've got a very few, couple dozen camo colored strings for the super super popular bows which for us is like the infinite edge some of the older matthews that we see a lot but it's rare that we have one just sitting here and they you know that they don't they want that color and that sort of thing but um and then so you got the string making process you got the other 20 bows waiting that came in before them and then you got the install, which it does take a lot longer when I video it. I know it looks super easy when you watch these, but you have to move this camera and do this and do that. And it takes a good bit longer. But on an average, I mean, it's according to the bow, but, you know, an average restring, you're looking at an hour to an hour and a half at least. And that's doing it the way we do it and going through it the right way. I mean, you could definitely just throw a string on it, but so now let me change topics for a minute. We've talked about this before. The peep was straight. We have the strings twisted, of course. We've put these two serving knots and compressed that twist, which made the peep twist. So I'm going to go take and put about a half twist in this thing, get it back straight. Um, and we've talked about this before as well. If these not if this wasn't tied tight or if you had it tied some cattywampus way or whatever and these started sliding that peep's going to twist back around we've had people before say hey my peep's twisting my peep's twisting and we you know email them back or whatever and say hey show us <clears throat> how you got it tied in and they'd have like three wraps of serving or something crazy and you could tell it was it would slide easy and we'd be like listen just for giggles take those two pieces of serving and slide them back toward the peep a little bit. And they'd be like, wow, my, my peep's straight again. Right. It's not a string to us problem. It is a, your serving not sliding problem. So I'm going to put the, uh, I don't think y'all care to see me putting a half a twist in the string. So I'm going to put a half twist in the string, stick the stops back on, and I'm going to meet you over at the draw board. Okie dokie folks. I got her thing twisted around there. I checked her axle to axle. We're looking good. We're hitting about 71 pounds. And it looks like our stops are dead on the money. Good news. That's real good news. So now, um, people have always talked about getting their bow in spec. So that's the, that's the things I look for. Axle to axle is right. Brace height's right. Poundage is right. Most bows run a couple, two pounds heavy. I noticed the new ones we get in the shop and through the years of bows and different manufacturers we have sold, straight out of the box you know you're looking at prime for example they'll put it on their sticker that it's like 71.9 or 72.3 so usually the uh that's sort of what i'm looking for this is a 70 pound bow it hit uh 71 and some change so if it was more than about a half a pound under 70 if it was 69 and a half or less I'd go back and check my axle to axle again, possibly put about a twist in each cable, bring that poundage up. But when the axle to axle, the brace height and the poundage all correlates, that tells me 
we're good to go. So let's go shoot it through the paper and just see where we're at. All right, so let's chronograph this thing. That is not the speed of this bow. It's where we shot through it last. I'm about to shoot this one. Pretty much a 72 pound impulse 34, 28 inch draw, 430 grain arrow. Here goes nothing. Two eighty four. That's not a bad number. I like being about there myself. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, had a fun time tuning up this bow. Nice set of strings. Um, tuned up pretty easy. Just did a few little adjustments there. As always, if you need your bow tuned, come by and see us. We're the Archery Shack in Anderson, South Carolina. If you're not local, you can ship in your bow. You, we've got it set up now on archeryshackstrings.com. You can select uh, Super Tune. You go ahead and pay for it, ship it to us, and that price includes us restringing it, tuning it, and shipping it back to you. If you just need a tune, shoot us an email, archeryshack at gmail.com, and you're going to ship it in, uh, and we can, we can work it out that way. Of course, it would be a lot cheaper if you didn't need strings. You just needed a, a straight-up tune. But we have people call all the time needing all sorts of different stuff. They might need some arrows or a rest put on or whatever. We'll be happy to help you out. I know a lot of folks don't have a local archery shop, so we're happy to do anything we can to help. I'll put all the contact information in the description. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Share it with anybody you might think uh, would like to watch it, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank y'all.